Krishna. Hi Krishna, dear devotees. We have Malani and Eze, Kim, Anandini, and Ladini. These two sound nice together, Anandini and Ladini. So today, Krishna, today is Govardhan Puja, the Govardhan Ki Jai. So we have a special program prepared by none other than Bhakta Eze. We'll do some uh, some reading together from uh, Krishna book. And if you don't have it, don't worry because I will share it on my screen. Okay, maybe we can do some invocations, just jumping right in. Um, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschachare Shatari. So we will be reading there. So we are beginning with chapter uh, 24. I think there's different uh, editions. On the edition that I'm showing here on the computer, it is chapter 24. Um, and so I'll begin. I'm proposing we can each read one, two, or maybe three paragraphs, depending on the length and on desire. And we can take turns. Um, so I'll read say, the first uh, the first three. And then whoever wants to jump next, you can just jump next. If you find that you have a difficult time jumping in, you can raise your virtual hand and then that'll let me know and then I'll call it. So without further ado, while engaged in, while engaged with the Brahmins who were too involved in the performance of Vedic sacrifices, Krishna and Balaram also saw that the cowherd men were preparing a similar sacrifice in order to pacify Indra the king of heaven, who is responsible for supplying water. As stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, a devotee of Krishna has strong and firm faith in the understanding that, that if he is simply engaged in Krishna consciousness and Krishna's transcendental loving service, then he is freed from all other obligations. A pure devotee of Lord Krishna doesn't have to perform any of the ritualistic functions enjoined in the Vedas, nor is he required to worship any demigods. Being a devotee of Lord Krishna, one is understood to have performed all kinds of Vedic rituals and all kinds of worship to the demigods. Just by performing the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies or worshiping the demigods, one does not develop devotional service for Krishna, but one who is engaged fully in the service of the Lord has already finished all Vedic injunctions. Krishna ordered a stop to all such activities by his devotees, for he wanted to firmly establish exclusive devotional service during his presence in Vrindavan. Krishna knew that the cowherd men who were preparing for the Indra sacrifice because he is the omniscient personality of Godhead. But as a matter of etiquette, he began to inquire with great honor and submission from elder personalities like Maharaj Nanda and others. Krishna asked his father, my dear father, what is this arrangement going on for a great sacrifice? What is the result of such sacrifice and for whom is it meant? How is it performed? Will you kindly let me know? I am very anxious to know this procedure, so please explain to me the purpose of this sacrifice. Upon this inquiry, his father, Nanda Maharaj, remained silent, thinking that his young boy would not be able to understand the intricacies of performing the yagya. Krishna, however, persisted. My dear father, for those who are liberal and saintly, uh, there is no secrecy. They do not think anyone to be a friend or enemy because they are always open to everyone. 
And even for those who are not so liberal, nothing should be secret for the family members and friends, although secrecy may be maintained for persons who are inimical. Therefore, you cannot keep any secrets from them. All persons are engaged in fruitive activities. Some know what these activities are and they know the result and some execute activities without knowing the purpose of, or the result. A person who acts with full knowledge gets the full result. One who acts without knowledge does not get such a perfect result. Therefore, please let me know the purpose of the sacrifice which you are going to perform. Is it, is it according to Vedic injunction or is it simply a popular ceremony? Kindly let me know in detail about the sacrifice. Honoring the sacrifice from Krishna, Mahajna Da replied, My dear boy, the ceremonial performance is more or less traditional, because when falling you to the mercy of King Indra, and the clouds are its representatives, and because water is so important for our living, we must show some gratitude to the controller of this rainfall. Maharaj Indra. We are arranging, therefore, to pacify King Indra because he was very kind, because he has very kindly sent us cloud to pour down sufficient quantity of rain for successful agricultural activity. Water is very important, and without rainfall, we cannot farm or produce grain. We cannot live if there is no rainfall. It's necessary for successful religious ceremonies, economic development, and ultimate liberation. Therefore, we mm -hmm. should not give up the traditional ceremonial function. If one gives it up, being influenced by lust or greed or fear, then it does not look very good for him. After hearing this, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Goddess, in the presence of his father, and all the coward men of Vrindavan <clears throat> spoke in such a way as to make heavenly King Indra very angry. He suggested that they forego the sacrifice, the reason for this, uh, discouraging the sacrifice, the sacrifice performed to his Indra were twofold. First, as stating in the Bhagavad Gita, there is no need to worship the demigods for any material advancement. All results derived from worshiping the demigods are simply temporary, and only those who are less intelligent are interested with temporary results. Secondary, whatever temporary results one derives from worshiping the demigods is actually granted by the permission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is clearly stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Maya, Maya Eva. Whatever benefit is supposed to be derived from the demigods is actually bestowed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Without the permission of the Supreme Personality mm -hmm. of Godhead, one cannot bestow any benefit upon others. But sometimes the demigods become fostered by the influence of material nature, thinking themselves as all in all. They try to forget the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is clearly stated that in, the instance, that in this instance, Krishna wanted to make King Indra angry. Krishna's advance was especially meant for the annihilation of the demons and, for, and protection of the devotees. King Indra was certainly a devotee, not a demon, but because he was fucked up, Krishna wanted to teach him a lesson. He first tried to make Indra angry by stopping the Indra Puja, which was arranged by the Tower of Man in Vrindavan. Would somebody, <clears throat> would somebody online like to read? I'll read if you like. Is it starting with, with this prop purpose? Yeah, with this purpose in mind. Okay. With this purpose in mind, Krishna began to talk as if he were an uh, atheist. Uh, you're going to have to excuse me a little. The type is so small. But um, an atheist. Okay, I, Supporting the, but I'll try. Supporting the philosophy of um, karma. Uh, I'm sorry. That thing you just pulled up is blocking the type. Are you trying to make the type bigger or something? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. 
All right, thanks. Uh, Is that good now? Or? Uh, yeah, that's a little better, but that thing has to move because it's, yeah, great, okay. Um, all right, sorry, uh, with this purpose in mind, atheist supporting the philosophy of karma, Mima Missia, advocates of this type of philosophy do not accept the supreme authority of the personality of Godhead. They put forward the argument that if anyone works nicely, the result is sure to come. Their opinion is that even if there is a God who gives man the results of his fruitive activities, there is no need to um, worship him because unless man works, he cannot bestow any good results. They say that instead of worshiping a de de demigod or God, people should give attention to their own duties and that good results will surely come. Lord Krishna began to speak to his father according to these principles of the karma mima, yes, uh, mima Okay, philosophy. My Lord Krishna began to speak to his father according to these principles of the karma mima miss, uh, philosophy. My dear father, he said, I don't think you need to worship any demigod for the successful performance of your agricultural activities. Every living being is a uh, born according to his past karma and leaves his life simply taking the results of his present karma. Everyone is born in different types of species of life according to his past activities, and he gets his next birth according to the activities of this life. Different grades of material happiness and distress comforts the disadvantages of life are different results of different kinds of activities and either from the past or present life. Maharaj Nanda and other elderly members argued that without satisfying the predominating God, one cannot derive any good results simply by material activities. This is actually the fact. For example, it is sometimes found that it is that in spite of first class medical help and treatment by a first class physician, a diseased person dies. It is concluded therefore that first class medical treatment or the attempt of first class physicians are not in themselves the cause or curing a, a, for a patient. There must be the hand of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Similarly, a father's mother and mother's taking care of their children is not cause of the children's comfort. Sometimes it is found that in spite of all care by the parents, the children's go, children go bad or succumb to death. Therefore, material causes are not sufficient for results. There must, there must be the sanction of the Supreme Personality Godhead. Nanda Maharaj therefore advocated that in order to get good results for agricultural activity, they must satisfy Indra, the superintendent deity of the rain supply. Lord Krishna nullified the, the argument saying that the demigods give results only to the persons who have executed their duties for prescribed duties. Therefore, demigods are dependent on the execution of duties and not absolute in awarding good results to anyone. My dear father, there is no need to worship the demigods, uh, the demigod Indra. Lord Krishna said, everyone has to achieve the results of his own work. We can actually see that one becomes busy according to the natural tendency of his work. And according to that natural tendency, all living entities either human beings or demigods achieve their respective results. All living entities achieve higher or lower bodies and create enemies and friends or neutral parties only because of their different kinds of work. One should be careful to discharge the duties according to his natural instincts and not divert attention to the worship of various demigods. The demigods will be satisfied by the proper execution of du all duties. So this is no need to worship. So this is no need to worship them. <laughs> Let us rather perform and, um, our prescribed duties very nicely. Actually, one 
cannot be happy without executing his proper prescribed duties. One who does not, therefore, properly discharge his prescribed duties is compared to an unchaste woman. The proper prescribed duties of the Brahmana is the study of the Vedas, the proper duty of the royal order, the Kasatriyas is engage, engaged in, in protecting the citizens, the proper duty of the Vaishya community is agriculture, trade, and, um, and protection of the cows, and the proper duties of the Sudras is service to the higher classes, namely the Brahmanas, the Kasatriyas, and the Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas. We belong to the Vaishnava community and our proper duty is to farm or to trade and with the agriculture procedure to protect cows or take to banking. I'm going to stop there. And would somebody else online like to read? Yes. yes. Okay, go ahead, Anandini. Okay. Krishna further explained to his father, this cosmic manifestation is going on under the... We start uh, one, one verse up, uh, one, one uh, hair, Krishna identified. Okay. Krishna identified himself with Vaishya community because Nanda Maharaj was protecting many cows and Krishna was taking care of them. He enumerated four kinds of business engagements for the Vaishya community namely agriculture, trade, protection of cows, and banking. Although the Vaishyas can take to any of these occupations, the men of Vrindavan were engaged primarily in the protection of cows. Krishna further explained to his father, this cosmic manifestation is going on under the influence of three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. These three modes are the cause of creation, maintenance, and destruction. The cloud is caused by the action of the mode of passion. Therefore, it is the mode of passion which causes the rainfall. And after the, the rainfall, the living entities derive the result, success in agricultural work. What then has Indra to do in this affair? Even if you do not please Indra, what can he do? We do not derive any special benefit from Indra. Even if, if he is there, he pours water on the oceans also, where there is no need of water. So he is pouring water on the ocean or on the land. It does, not, it does not depend on our worshiping him. As far as we are concerned, we do not need to go to another city or village or foreign country. There are pal palatial buildings in the cities, but we are satisfied living in this forest of Vrindavan. Our specific relationship is with Govardhan Hill and Vrindavan Forest and nothing more. I therefore request you, my dear father, to begin a sacrifice which will satisfy the local Brahmins and Govardhan Hill and let us have nothing to do with Indra. After hearing this statement by Krishna, Nanda Maharaj replied, my dear boy, since you are asking, I shall arrange for a separate sacrifice for the local Brahmins and Govardhan Hill. But for the present, let me execute the sacrifice known as Indra Yagya. But Krishna replied, my dear father, don't delay. The sacrifice you propose for Govardhan and the local Brahmins will take much time. Better take the arrangement and the paraphernalia you have already made for sacrificing Indra Yagya and immediately engage it to satisfy Govardhan Hill and the local Brahmins. Maharaj Nanda finally relented. The cowherd man then inquired from Krishna how he wanted the yagya performed, and Krishna gave them the following directions. Prepare very nice foodstuffs of all descriptions from the grains and ghee collected for the yagya. Prepare rice, dal, then halva, pakora, puri, and all kinds of milk preparations like sweet rice, sweet balls, sandish, ras, sagula, and ladu. And invite the learned Brahmins who can chant the Vedic hymns and offer oblations to the fire. The Brahmins should be given all kinds of grains in charity. Then decorate all the cows and feed them. After performing this, give money in charity to the Brahmins. 
As far as the lower animals are concerned, such as the dogs and the lower grades of people, such as the chandalas or the fifth class of men who are considered untouchable, they also may be given samchis prashadam. After giving nice grasses to the cows, the sacrifice known as Govardhan Puja may immediately begin. This sacrifice will very much satisfy me. In this statement, Lord Krishna practically described the whole economy of the Vaishya community. In all communities of human society and in the animal kingdom, kingdom among the cows, dogs, goats, etc., everyone has his part to play. Each is to work in cooperation for the total benefit of all society, which includes not only animate objects, but also in inanimate objects like hills and land. The Vaishya community is specifically responsible for the economic improvement of the society by producing grains, by giving protection to the cows, by transporting food when needed, and by banking and finance. From this statement, we learn also that the cats and dogs, although not so important, are not to be neglected. Cow protection is actually more important than protection of cats and dogs. Another hint we get from this statement is that the chandalas or the untouchables are also not to be neglected by the higher classes. Everyone is important, but some are directly responsible, responsible for the advancement of human society and some are only indirectly responsible. However, when Krishna consciousness is there, then everyone's total benefit is taken care of. I'll stop here. Babini, would you like to read? Yes. Okay, we have to make it bigger somehow. The sacrifice known as Govardhan Puja is observed in the Krishna consciousness movement. Lord Chaitanya has recommended that since Krishna is worshipable, so his land, Vrindavan, and Govardhan Hill are also worshipable. To confirm this statement, Lord Krishna said that Govardhan Puja is as good as worship of him. From that day, the Govardhan Puja has been still going on and is known as Anakuta. In all the temples of Vrindavan or outside of Vrindavan, huge quantities of food are prepared in this ceremony and are very sumptuously distributed to the general population. Sometimes the food is thrown to the crowds and they enjoy collecting it off the ground. From these instances, we can understand that prasadam offered to Krishna never becomes polluted or contaminated, even if it is thrown on the ground. The people therefore collect it and eat with great satisfaction. The Supreme Personality of God at Krishna therefore advised the coward man to stop the Indra Gyagya and begin the Govardhan Puja in order to chastise Indra, who was very much puffed up at the being the supreme controller of the heavenly planet. The honest and simple coward man, headed by Nanda Maharaj, accepted Krishna's proposal and executed in detail everything he advised. They perform Govardhan worship and circumvallation of the hill. Following the inauguration of Govardhan Puja, people in Vrindavan still dress nicely and assemble near Govardhan Hill to offer worship and circumvallation of the hill, leading their cows all around. According to the instruction of Lord Krishna, Nanda Maharaj and Kaurna called to learn Brahmanas and began to worship Govardhan Hill by chanting varied hymns and offering prasadam. The inhabitants of Vrindavan assembled together, decorated their cows, and gave them grass. Keeping the cows in front, they began to circumambulate Govardhan Hill. The copies also dressed themselves very luxuriantly and sat in bull driven carts, chanting the glories of Krishna's pastimes. Assembled there to act as priests for Govardhan Puja, the Brahmanas offered their blessings to the coward men and their wives the copies. When everything was complete, Krishna assumed a great transcendental form and declared to the inhabitants of Vrindavan that he was himself Govardhan Hill in order to convince the devotees that Govardhan Hill and Krishna himself are identical. Then Krishna began to eat all the food offered there. The identity of Krishna and Govardhan Hill is still honored. 
And great devotees take rocks from Govardhan Hill and worship them exactly as they worship the deity of Krishna in the temples. Devotees therefore collect smaller rocks or pebbles from Govardhan Hill and worship them at home because this worship is as good as deity worship. The form of Krishna who began to eat the offerings who was separately constituted and Krishna himself along with other inhabitants of Vrindavan began, began to offer obeisances to the deity as well as Govardhan Hill. In offering obeisances to the huge form of Krishna himself and Govardhan Hill, Krishna declared, just see how Govardhan Hill has assumed this huge form and is favoring us by accepting all the offerings. Krishna also declared at that meeting, one who neglects the worship of Govardhan Puja, as I am personally conducting it, will not be happy. There are many snakes on Govardhan Hill, and persons neglecting the prescribed duty of Govardhan Puja will be beaten by these snakes and killed. So kind. In order to assure the good fortune of the cows and themselves, all people of Vrindavan near Govardhan must worship the hill, as prescribed by me. Thus performing the Govardhan Puja sacrifice, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan follow the instructions of Krishna, the son of Vasudeva, and afterwards they return to their respective homes. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 24th chapter of Krishna, worshipping Govardhan Hill. Thank you, everyone. And so now, special surprise. We are going to get to hear from you about that. <laughs> well, not exactly, but... Let's see. Let's see. Let's work. Um. <laughs> Maybe it won't work. Uh, my plan. Try one more time. My plan. My well didn't come too prepared for that. So my plan was to share this little Krishna video um, about the day we're done puja. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to be working.
They ought to. I hold their prosperity in my hands. They must know that I am the source of rain that nourishes their fields and fills their granaries. Sambartaka, grant rain to those humans who perform my sacrifice. Indra, king of the heavens. Indra, you forget your position. You are only doing your duty, carrying out Lord Vishnu's orders. I do as I will, and I don't take any orders. Indra, I am your teacher. You have become intoxicated with your fame and glory. I advise you to correct yourself. Your pride will destroy you. Must you have this festival for Indra? We must have this festival of Indra every year to please him so he may give us rain. Mm, is it just like we pay our taxes to King Kamsa every year? Oh no. Indra is not a wicked person. He controls the rains. Water is most important for life. That's why we worship Indra each year with this festival. But father, he's just doing his duty carrying out Lord Vishnu's orders. Oh, Krishna, this ceremony is an old tradition and we must not give it up. Father, then why don't we worship the earth, which gives us everything we need? Why not the sun, which sustains life? Why not River Yamuna? Krishna, you are right, but it is not practical. We can't disregard traditions that have been observed for generations. But Father, should we blindly accept tradition? It is Lord Vishnu who has given Indra and the other Devatas their power. What Krishna says is true. All the Devatas work under the direction of Lord Vishnu. In the Vedas, there is no separate yagna prescribed for Indra. We are cowherds. Our wealth is our cow. All our cows depend on Govardhan for their food. We depend on Govardhan Hill for everything. So we should actually worship Govardhan and not Indra. My beloved friends of Vrindavan, we owe all our gratitude to mighty Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill? Indra has always the land doesn't know what he's talking about. See for yourselves the wonders of Govardhan Hill, the very life of Vrindavan. Our cows graze happily on his forest grass and give us the sweetest milk. His waterfalls and springs quench our thirst. On his meadows, we grow our grains and pick our fruits. The wood from his trees shelters us in our safe and cozy homes. We depend not on Indra for our survival, but on our blessed Govardhan Hill. Bless you, Krishna. All this is not due to Indra, but to Govardhan Hill. So, my friends, gather your offerings and let us celebrate the glory of Govardhan Hill. Your prayers and offerings. 
You shall be greatly blessed if you circumambulate me along with your herds. What a magnificent festival! Govardhan Hill must be very pleased, eh, Madhu? It's a great worship in Govardhan Hill, Balram. But I'm also going to give a little something to Indra, just in case. One for Indra, one for me. Two for Indra, two for me. Look! The villagers of Vrindavan are worshipping Govardhan Hill. This is shocking. How dare they? I must inform Indra immediately. Welcome, Samvartaka. Join me as I enjoy the glory of my devotee's offerings. <laughs> Don't tell me you accidentally flooded another village. Put it out of your mind. <laughs> I'm afraid this news will greatly anger you. My lord, the villagers of Rindavan have diverted your festival to Govardhan Hill. What? Govardhan Hill? <laughs> They've stopped my festival to worship a mound of earth? How could this have happened, Sambardaka? After all the rain I've given them? I hear they are misled by the banter of a silly boy. This is no time for jokes! I am sorry, my lord, but it is the truth. Krishna, the son of Nanda, has used his mystic powers to bewilder the minds of the people of Vrindavan. So, they choose to listen to some foolish brat instead of obeying my orders. These people have lost their minds. Now they will have my wrath upon them. Samvartaka! My lord. Go forth and inundate Vrindavan. Destroy the festival of Govardhan and destroy the impudence of the inhabitants of Vrindavan.
Vrindavan will soon regret having listened to that foolish boy. Indra is sure to destroy us all. My dearest Krishna, I know you meant well, but your actions have enraged Indra. We must beg his forgiveness at once. But father... Wait, Balaram. Father is right. Their suffering is due to my advice. It's not too late. We can beg forgiveness from Indra. Wait. Krishna would never let any harm come to us or his beloved Vrindavan. It is true, mother. My love for you all is too great to be checked by Indra's wickedness. I will protect Vrindavan. Krishna! Oh, my child! Lord Indra will show us no mercy if we cannot destroy one little village as he has ordered. Rage on, warriors. This storm must not cease until Vrindavan is completely submerged. You seem exhausted. Sit down, sit down. I want to hear all about it. Tell me, is there any trace of Vrindavan left after your storm? My lord, your warriors have been making a raging storm for six days and nights with fiery lightning and torrential rainfall, the likes of which no human has ever seen. Good, good, good. They must have leveled Vrindavan by now. I wish I could say that, Lord Indra, but I must confess, our storms have been no match for Krishna. My storm warriors are no match for a boy. He holds Govardhan Hill above his head and protects the inhabitants of Vrindavan and their animals. Surely your eyes deceive you, Samvartaka. Six days of lightning must have blinded you. Bring me Airavata, my elephant. I shall ride to Vrindavan to see this miracle myself. As I told you, my lord. If this Krishna thinks he's some kind of powerful demigod, he'll soon learn how powerless he is against Indra.
can't escape the wrath of Indra. Now you shall pay for listening to Krishna. cannot harm you. Do not fear. the hill by yourself? Don't be foolish, Krishna. You are just a little boy. You go out first. You are too kind to me. Are you sure you don't want to go first? Lot of affection for me. Why else would you come here after I've offended you? Lord Krishna, it is I who have offended you. I have acted like a fool. I had forgotten that it is you who give me my power. I am your eternal servant, and I beg your forgiveness. Indra, you were blinded by power and ignorance, and I had to do this so you could see it for yourself. This is my mercy upon you. Such an uncommon boy has come to live with us in Vrindavan. All I know is that he is my son, my darling Krishna. Jai!
There we go. I was muted. So Kim says, wonderful film. I agree. I heard maybe Ladini laughing. I'm seeing her clapping. <clears throat> now, it seems that we have some commentary about, oh, questioning the accuracy of the film. So I'd like to invite our guest speaker, Malini Davidasi, to inform us what are the inaccurate portions of this film? Here we have her. He said, you shouldn't accept that before online because Elsie is supposed to give the class. I was just making comment throughout the movie that there is some in, in, inaccuracy about the, the dialogue and the, even the plot is different, even the way Indra looks is different. So, but I enjoy a bit of Krishna too. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. You're supposed to speak and answer so questions. You mentioned now. something about discrepancies. Can you give us one example of the plot being different? Well, um, at the beginning, <clears throat> Nanda Marsh, like, we say, okay, let's, let's do that. And, and uh, the dialogue missed the whole philosophical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then there was a, um, like, uh, like Indra's, Indra's um, look was different than Lord Indra is supposed to look like. So he doesn't have eyes all over his body. Yeah, and, and many of the dialogues are so different than what we just read, really. Mm -hmm. If you look at the dialogues, they're the, the different uh, even their mood is, is different than, than, than what we have in Krishna consciousness. And at the same time, it's going to change the attitude of Krishna. And if children grow up with little Krishna and thinking that he is a superhero, then that's really, really special. Hi, Krishna. There are so many examples of inaccurate I'm not sure why my video is not there, but um, can, you, can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't know why that's happening. Um, it looks kind of creepy, so I'm just going to cover it up. Um, it yes. looks like there's thunder and lightning at your place. We need to pray for Krishna's protection. I like the picture of you, gray and white. Okay, there we go. Um, yes, so Hare Krishna. So Malini was, was um, enlightening us about how some of the dialogue is not accurate. Indra doesn't have eyes all over his body. Krishna didn't go into the philosophy that we just read about. And it's still fun. We're still looking at Krishna. We're enjoying Krishna. We're smiling and laughing with Krishna so that it can still be uh, to our benefit to enjoy, enjoy little Krishna. Um, so I don't, I don't have much more to say other than um, in talking with Malini and kind of just looking at the the time of, of when I participated. So, so like my first memory of going to a temple was in Colorado and it was like around this time of the year. And I remember that we were dancing in circles in the temple room. And so kind of like, we're, we're both pretty confident that it was, that it was uh, Govardhan Puja. Um, and that was like, yeah, that's my, my first memory of something Krishna conscious that I intentionally went to and I remember, um, I remember some of the devotees there saying, wow, you, you must have so much love for Krishna. Because I had no idea really what any of this was about, but people were singing and dancing. So I was just kind of dancing ecstatically in the room. And I was like, oh, you have so much love for Krishna. I was like, well, I don't, I don't really know about any of this, um, but it was fun. 
And now in remembering, I'm like, oh, wow, I, I wish that was my, my relationship with Krishna now, where I was like dancing in ecstasy around the room and all of those things. Um, but unfortunately, I have all kinds of like different dialogues with Krishna, uh, different kinds of rebellion and things like that. Um, so I'd like to open it up to questions, comments, further corrections, or anything of the sort about the word on. I, I I would comment. Okay, so I'm, I see Kim <laughs> um, and then Anandini and then Molly. Okay, uh, yeah, I just want to say um, when I first started uh, going to the Hare Krishna temples, um, I was in Philly and I had barely been going at all. And I was asked to create the Govardhan Puja Hill out of um, uh, Halava. <laughs> And it was so it's uh, so overwhelming. I couldn't believe that they gave me that assignment. But it was so fun. It was so artistic and fun. And I just remember thinking that you know, growing up, uh, we didn't have a lot of festivals or, or, or a lot of holidays like that, or really special occasions. And I thought, wow, this is so wonderful for children to have these kind of wonderful activities, you know. And I was I just so enamored by it. I just loved it. So that's a really special memory for me. I, that's all. Sharing that, Kim. you wanted to share? Yes, thank you for this fun class. And I want to uh, congratulate you. Like you're the first person who made Noah attend the class for more than 20 minutes. <laughs> she stayed with me and she watched and she said, oh, mom, but that's, that's going to be taken off my screen time. And I said, no, no, it's a special day. And she said, oh, so tomorrow I could watch little Krishna all day long and it wouldn't be taken off my screen time because it's devotional service. And I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what if I get a headache? Can I still watch? Well, if you want. <laughs> so very intelligent, you have very intelligent children and in the <laughs> Yeah, and what you shared about your first festival at the temple, Govardhan Pucha was also my first festival at the temple. I think it was two, 2004. And I was living with, a, with friends. I just moved into a like, shared house. And one of them went to, to the Hare Krishna temple in Zurich. And, and we, I was in teacher training. And in religious class, we had the assignment to, to portray a religion. And so I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll portray the, my, my housemate and the Hare Krishnas. And so I, I did a, por a portrait. I went with her to Govardhan Pucha and made a film. And then I showed it to the, all the, the students at school, at teacher training. And there were a lot of critical questions. And I was like taking a stand for these Hare Krishnas. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, wow, I would like to be in this place today because I had no idea what I was just like presenting a, a religion. And, and, and I was so like so protective of this, of these people and of Krishna. <laughs> and today I have a lot of hesitancy to I'm not natural in, you know, as natural in presenting and and protecting this, being an advocate for Krishna consciousness. So thanks. Your, your personal story brought up all these memories. It's so sweet to me to hear kind of like your, your natural and instinctive protectiveness over Krishna and Krishna consciousness, even though it sounds like more or less you had really no idea what it was about. Really sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now that I'm like I'm I'm on this path and I'm fully convinced, I, I feel like uh, like not wanting to uh, stand up for it as much or expose myself, like you know. So I will think about that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So we weren't hearing you, whatever you shared, or at least I wasn't. You mean just what, what Anandini was sharing just now? Now, after Anandini shared, you said like one sentence, maybe, and I didn't understand it. Oh, um, maybe I said, uh, maybe I said thank you, or maybe I said it, uh, maybe when I said, oh, it, it's really sweet to me to hear of like your, your natural protectiveness of Krishna, even when you more or less had nothing to do with it. Maybe it was one of, one of those things. Thank you. Can I share too? Yes. But I don't know if Malini wanted to share because there was like quite a line. She's, she's going like this. She's going like this. Okay. So I love this little Krishna stories. So thank you very much for playing it for us. And it's like, so yeah, it's like just like the stories comes to life for me. I'm not worried too much about like a different dialogue. I noticed there was a different dialogue. But it was a good dialogue too, <laughs> according to my <laughs> discrimination. And I really appreciate your and Anandine's sharing about like, like the first original natural like joining in and enthusiasm to share. And then like as the time goes on, it becomes more and more complex and like that. Definitely, I have same experience. Like when I first started to share Krishna consciousness, I thought everyone will be like, oh, thank you. Like, thank you for like, finally someone telling us how to like live this life and what this is all about. I thought like, I will be like, welcome with, you know, I don't know, flowers flowing, falling from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't happen. And I know I'm more careful. And I want to say this, just like this, like this kind of stories is like my, my the most favorite stories from all like Shimad Bhagavatam or Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Thank you for the heart. <laughs> With this, uh, like, like it just shows so much of like Krishna's kindness and personal care for his devotees. Like he, he like, He's like so intelligent and he creates like situation for Indra that all the weeds come up and he can see himself. And then he's like, oh no, like, oh my God, I'm so fallen. And then he connects with humility. So that's just really beautiful. And I like it so much. It gives me some hope, like to like really trust that Krishna is helping all of us. So this like story like this highlights it. And then, and then Krishna does it in such a way that it's like so fun and it's like a churning connector. I felt like so like drawn to the story when he was holding cover down here and then he was playing his little flute. <laughs> and then, then they, they are like having party under the umbrella on cover down here. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so sweet. I'm glad to hear that this like, um say it, it, it like uh, builds your your trust or your kind of your conviction and in, in Krishna's care super glad to hear that yeah yeah it's like uh, he's, uh, he's loving care even though like Indra at first he doesn't think that's Krishna's loving care as a little child or the teenage child he's just like I don't like this <laughs> you know but then but then there's a, the turn around of like understanding Wow, like, thank you, Krishna, for helping. So that it can, like, in a way, um, help you to have trust that even if you're experiencing something in life where you might say, this doesn't look like Krishna's care. And like, okay, maybe there's some care in there after all. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, yeah, all these stories, just like, all is so touching. Like, this, like, transform, these, like, little transformations of different devotees or non-devotees or whatever. Krishna. Malini, did you want to share? I can share quickly. You know, the peace is that the party comes to Nara. I don't know how to share it, but it's the only way I said it out. And the, the, the biggest enemy of our detection of life is going to be pride. And uh, our Lord Krishna, like Ladini, was sharing he cares so much about Lord Indra that he acts in such a way to anger Indra. Like from the start, even his dialogue with about the 
the Mimamsa philosophy and about everything. Of course, he, Krishna always, when he throws one stone, he makes so many ripple effects. So there is so much more than taking care of Indra. It's like giving philosophy and training, you know, training everybody and his father included and everybody else. There's so much to that story, of course, but just the relationship with Indra, as Ladi shared, he, um, is uh, so kind and often Krishna. If we are sincere, Krishna takes care of our karma. And then he gave us the karma in such a way that he helps us to chant his name more sincerely or deeply or with more love. So that's uh, his kindness. Um, to make sure we, are, we, we don't have pride. And about your story, I was thinking, um, I was thinking you're such a devotee. I always said to, uh, to uh, uh, he doesn't like that, is he? <laughs> From the beginning I met him, I was telling him, oh, you're a devotee of Krishna. And that, <laughs> and the devotee went to dance around Govardhan here, and we, you know, in that also story from uh, uh, Anandini and your story, we can see how, how powerful it is. Uh, Agatha Sukriti, like to uh, to, to do those activities of devotional service, I get, you know, without knowing, without knowing mm -hmm. them, and now they, they 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 are so strong to. You know, those devotional service take us to get from knowing in devotional service. Yeah, and you must be a, a devotee of Guru Govardhan or Guru Raj Maharaj because that you started your devotional service like that and that you accepted to give the class today because I always try to get <laughs> easy to give class all the time. And so yeah, I see something kind of special. Thank you, Steph. Thank you all. Thank you, class, and for celebrating Govardhan, Govardhan Hill together. Uh, Ladini, did you want to say something else? Yeah, I would like to. Thanks. Yeah, uh, I, I actually want to say two things. I will try to do it quickly. One is about this Agatha Sukriti. So last weekend I went to like for vacation with my mother. And every during every Kartik, we go for a vacation for like a weekend. And so my mother always does Tamara Astakam with me, Tamara Astakam and offering the lights. So it's like our pastime for Kartik. And she's more and more into it as the years goes on. And and this time when we went, like I had like I always have a lot of luggage because like I have to like cook for Krishna when we are on vacation and then like my luggage and then the harmonium. So it's like a lot of things for one weekend. And then when we were going in the place where we lived, there appeared like a young man. And it was like really like he looked like a devotee, it was so beautiful and radiant. And he took the harmonium, and there was also like the Krishna books in the harmonium case, and like like the devotional things. And he's like, I'm going to help you. And he took the harmonium and took it like up all the stairs. I was like, Oh, thank you. And I was so happy that he chose the harmonium. And then when we were going back three days later. All of a sudden, this man appeared from I don't know where <laughs> and took the harmonium. He's like, I'm going to help you. <laughs> so I was really laughing because I knew that like, like he looked like a devotee for sure. And then he was like, by Krishna, I like, guided to do this service like twice, getting the harmonium. And there were like the ghee lamps and Krishna books, like on one, one case. So that was very sweet. And then my... <laughs> Second story is about Govardhan, like why I recently got a new deities, Radha Madan Mohan. And, and, you, and, and then I told the Yogeshwara, I'm complete now. I have like all the deities that I can even think of that they exist. And I will not want any more deities because I always want more deities. <laughs> and Yogeshwara was laughing at me and he said like, tomorrow, tomorrow we will want more, you know. <laughs> And the next day I have a, I have a bucked in for a visit and we were reading all the little Damodar stories and she loved Krishna book and she wanted to read more stories about little Krishna. And so I said, let's read about Govardhan Hill because that's coming up soon. And so the next day after the Ritis came, we were reading Govardhan, lifting Govardhan Hill. 
And I remember there are these like uh, stones, <laughs> stones from Gavardhan. I'm like, oh no, I need that. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> so that was funny. Like the mind always wants more things. So I immediately the next day I got the reminder, you don't have this one yet. But I'm like, okay, I'm good now. Anyway, I have enough. <laughs> We, we, we could draw we could draw several conclusions from that like okay you have a very astute husband who <laughs> to know you very well and also like i'm appreciating you um you dovetailing your desire for more in the service of krishna like what what i what um i can think of like few things that you wanting more of would actually be enhancing your spiritual life than than daily Right, it only creates opportunities for more offenses. <laughs> and we <laughs> that's also a perspective. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you, Ladini. Gordon Hill Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Lord Sri Krishna Ki Jai. Jai. Jai.